In this video, I am going to show you how to make a portable inverter or you can say a power bank to charge your laptops. You can also charge your mobile phone or power any small AC appliance. So continue watching this video and I will tell you step by step how to make your own. So let's build it. To power anything, you will need some kind of power source. I use these lithium ion cells because they are quite powerful and perfect for portable projects. So I connect 4 of them in series to get around 15.7 volts. As you already know, this small voltage is not capable of powering any AC appliance. So we need to step up over 15 volts to 220 volts. For this, I use a transformer which contains a ratio of 24, 12 and 24. Meaning that if we apply 220 volts on the primary coil of this transformer, we will get 24 volts on these two wires and 12 volt output on either these two wires or these two wires. So we can say that it is a center tap transformer whose internal structure looks like this. But if we do the reverse of this method and apply 15 volts on the secondary coil which is now our primary coil. So on the secondary coil we will get around 220 volts. But there is a one problem. Transformers only work with sinusoidal voltage. But our power source is DC. So we need some kind of circuit that converts our DC to some kind of pulse wave with a frequency of 50 Hz. This 50 Hz frequency is important because any AC appliance need only 50 to 60 Hz in order to work properly. At this stage, I want to criticize on the scrappy schematic found on internet. They might produce 220 volts, but they does not produce a frequency of 50 Hz. So don't make these kinds of oscillator circuits, it might blow up your devices. So I utilize this any triple 5 timer IC to generate this 50 Hz frequency. After wiring the circuit on a breadboard, I hook its output to my oscilloscope. We can see that it generates a square rib with a frequency of roughly about 50 Hz. But there is another problem. A sine wave contains only a positive and a negative peak in its one cycle. But our wave contains only the positive peak. So to get this negative peak and overcome our problem, I utilize this LM358 dual op amp IC whose first op-amp is in inverted configuration and the second one is in non-inverted configuration. So in this way we get two outputs of the square wave whose first output contains the positive peak and the second one contains the negative peak. So let's hook this both outputs to my oscilloscope. As you can see that we get two square waves. To power the transformer with the square wave I utilize the N channel MOSFET whose drain would directly connect to the transformer. I use this IRF630, but it is better to use IRF Z44N. Now our circuit is complete. So I removed all the components from the breadboard and started creating a more permanent version on a piece of prof board. As always, a link to the circuit diagram and the part list is given in the description for your convenience if you want to rebuild this project. I also tried to make the circuit as small as possible, so it is easy to put in an enclosure later. After the circuit was complete, I got myself a sheet of acrylic. You have to use a white acrylic, but I have this transparent sheet, so I have to paint it in order to make it opaque. Then I put all my components inside the acrylic and secured them with bolts and nuts. I also use a switch to turn this inverter on and off. Then I connect all the wires together according to the circuit diagram. At last I secured all the sides together and our project was complete. So to test this inverter I attach a light bulb and turn on the power button which light up the bulb pretty well. As always, don't forget to like this video and let me know what you think about this project in the comment section below. Also, share this video and please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.